Chicken breasts aren't just for the grill, they're at home on the smoker as well. Now, if you haven't smoked a chicken breast before, you're missing out on an easy way to meal prep or simple weeknight dinners. And we'll show you how, coming up. I'm David Gafford from the Barbecue Lab, and I want to welcome you to Barbecue Basics, a video series to help you get out and make some of the staple meats of barbecue. Now, the whole series is available in the description below, so let's fire up our smoker and tackle smoked chicken breasts. So here's the question. If you have a direct heat grill, why would you want to smoke a chicken breast? Now, for me, it comes down to a few simple things. First, I find that smoked chicken breasts retain more moisture and end up juicier than their grilled counterparts. Now, second, I love smoked meats. If I can add a little smoke flavor to a meal, I'm all for it. And third, well, it's just an easy way to meal prep and make some protein for the week that will make it so I'm not cooking every meal and I can work with the kids' schedules of sports, music, and all of the extracurriculars. Now there's a few common questions that are asked around smoking chicken, and the first is, should I brine a chicken breast before smoking it? Now you can, but I generally don't. Now I'm not against brining, but I usually brine a whole chicken or a whole turkey, but chicken breasts I just season and get out on the smoker. That sounds like a fun head-to-head -head test to shoot in the future though, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out when fun new stuff like that comes along. Now, another question is how do you serve smoked chicken breasts? Well, we usually serve them with a baked potato and a veggie for a side with dinner. Now, we'll also use it as the meat in our chopped salads. We think it's great in enchiladas. We love it for tacos and nachos. We'll pull it and put it in a smoked chicken sandwich. Uh, we use it for soups, chicken tostadas. I mean, there's just so many options. So here's what we're doing. It's a meal prep day for us. So we're cooking for tonight's dinner and for a future dinner. Kids schedules are all over the place with sports, music, and all the other extracurriculars. So it's pretty normal that we're cooking one time to cover multiple meals. Now today we're working with barbecue flavors using our free chicken rub recipe that you can get here in the description of this video and on our website at thebarbecuelab.com. Now this rub we use on more than just chicken, but it's one of my go-to recipes that I pull out when I'm smoking chicken breasts or a spatchcock chicken, whole chicken. It's just so good and you can easily make it at home. So grab the recipe off the website, mix up a batch, and you've got your own chicken rub in just a few minutes. So for this cook, we picked up some of our favorite chicken breasts at Costco. They come in these red packages and I've been really pleased with how they turn out every time. I've had some chicken breasts that were woody and had texture issues lately from the grocery store, but I've been really happy with these in particular. They come two breasts to a package and we're smoking four breasts tonight. Now the process is pretty simple. I take the breasts out of the package and I pat them down with a paper towel to dry them off. I'll start with the presentation side down on the cutting board since I want the side everyone sees to be up during cooking. So here they are, presentation side down or the smooth side down. And I'm just going to take a can of spray canola oil and hit each breast a little to give the outside a little fat so the rub will stick and it'll help attract some smoke once it gets on the smoker. Now, I'm just going to give them a nice medium coat of the spice blend on the back side, making sure I don't leave any huge bare spots, and then flip them over and repeat the process. Now, I find that I need to pick up and season the large side of the breasts, or it'll completely miss the seasoning on that side, so don't forget about that. Now, this rub is pretty much all spices, so you can go pretty heavy with it. It's less than 20% salt from a ratio standpoint, so it's meant to bring flavor to your chicken, not just blow you out with salt. Now, a question people usually ask here is should you let the chicken breast sit for a while to let the rub tack up before putting them on the smoker? Now, you certainly can, but when I'm cooking for the family, I just season them and throw them on as long as the smoker is up to temperature and it's ready to go. Now, that's really a longer discussion for another time, so make sure you're subscribed and we'll have that one coming to you soon. Now, today we're using the Lone Star Grill's 48 by 24 offset smoker, and we're firing it up with cherry splits that have been seasoning here at the lab for about 18 months. Now, you don't have to use an offset smoker for this recipe. Use any smoker that you have available. The key is indirect heat and smoke. 
You can use a pellet grill, a charcoal Kamado grill with a diverter plate to keep the chicken away from the fire, a propane smoker, even a barrel smoker since it's kind of indirect with the meat being around three feet away from the coals. Just shoot for 250 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit on your smoker and you'll be good to go. Now people will often ask why we're choosing the temperature we're using today and it's because I think 250 is about the lowest temperature I'd smoke chicken breasts. They can tend to get a rubbery texture the longer that they're on the smoker at a lower heat. And I find that 250 to 275 will give us the most smoke flavor with optimal texture and moisture in the breast. Now I'm using the Fireboard Spark as our leave-in thermometer today. And it's a cool little feature that not everyone knows about this instant read. There's a port here on the end where you can plug in a standard or a competition Fireboard probe. And it's both your leave-in thermometer and your instant read for the cook. Now, I wanna pull this chicken off the smoker when it hits 160 degrees internal, so I'm going to place the probe in the thickest part of the breast of the smallest breast that I'm cooking so I can catch the smallest before it overcooks since it will be finished first. Now, all that we need to do is wait until the fireboard tells us it's dinner time and let the Lone Star work its magic. Well, the fireboard spark has said that we've hit 160 degrees internal, but I always verify with an instant read thermometer to make sure that things are done. And it's a good thing I did on this cook because the instant read was reading about 20 degrees lower than the leave-in probe, which told me that I didn't hit center mass of the chicken breast with the initial probe that I put in. So I need to readjust the probe. So I took the probe out, put it back in what looked to be the center of the breast, and the instant read and the leave-in agreed that we were about 20 degrees away from being finished. So here we are about 20 minutes later, and we're getting that 160 to 165 degree internal reading from both the leave-in and the instant read, which means that these breasts are done. Now I checked each individual breast and all of them were over 160 degrees, which is the magic number for me when I pull them off the smoker. There's a thing called carryover cooking that happens with any meat you pull off the smoker or the grill, and I plan for that when I cook. I know that a piece of smoked meat will carry over an additional three to five degrees when I pull it off the cooker, so I don't wait until I see 165 most of the time to pull off a chicken breast. Now I will just put some aluminum foil loosely over the plate that the chicken is on, and I'll let it rest for about 10 minutes. It gives the meat a chance to settle down, the moisture to redistribute, and make sure that the juice stays in the meat instead of running all over the cutting board. Now it's been 10 minutes, and here's what they look like. It's time to cut one open, and you're going to see that there's a clean cut through, and it's tender and juicy. And no, I'm not gonna squeeze my dinner so you can see the moisture pour out onto the cutting board. I'm going to eat this, so you can squeeze your own chicken if you want, but this is my dinner, so no squeezing. Now we'll usually serve this with a starch and a side and call it dinner, but another way that we'll use this is to pull the chicken. I'll just cut it into chunks and put it in my KitchenAid mixer with the paddle attachment, then it'll shred right up. I'll take this shredded chicken and put it on tostadas with some cheese, put them under the broiler in the oven for a few minutes, and then I'll top them with some pico and it makes an awesome dinner. I'll put some of this on a bun with some barbecue sauce. It's an awesome pulled chicken sandwich. We'll cook 10 to 20 breasts at a time with this recipe, and we'll vacuum seal the chicken in portions that we know that we'll use it in. We'll shred some, we'll weigh it out, seal it up, and stick it in the fridge for future meals. Then we'll take some of the whole breasts, seal them up in a vacuum seal bag as well, and stick them in the freezer for easy weeknight meals. Now when it comes time to reheat, we love to use our sous vide. I'll set the sous vide to 145, throw in the sealed bag an hour or so before dinner, and the protein is ready for easy weeknight meals. Now, give this one a try, gang. It's, it's been a game changer for us when we're looking for easy and still delicious meals when we're constantly on the go. Now, if you want to grab our free chicken rub recipe, head on over to thebarbecuelab.com. And if you'd like to know more about any of the gear that we used in today's video, check out the links in the description below or on our gear page on thebarbecuelab.com forward slash shop. It's an entire page that lists all the gear we use here at the lab and shows you where you can get it for the best price. Now, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button. And if you like outdoor cooking, please consider subscribing since that's what we'll bring you every week in new videos. Thanks for watching, but get out there and light up your grill. 
We want you to eat better, not just watch videos. So get outside and start putting some smoke in the air, and I will see you next time.